criminal mastermind Cyrus arrives at a prestigious auction house in Italy with a plan in mind. Inside, he walks past disguised Master Denton and hacker My Son but pretends not to know them, even though they are part of his team. Nearby, an Interpol team led by Abby keeps an eye on the event in case Cyrus tries something. Abby is furious because she dated Cyrus for a week without knowing he was a wanted criminal. Simultaneously, in London, team members Magnus, the safecracker, and Luke, the engineer, are getting into position for the auction. In Venice, Molson buys the first piece of art for 11 million. Then the host introduces the artist Anna 8, whose NFT is the next item being auctioned. A mask made of 482 cameras will create an NFT based on Van Gogh's style and a live 30 second fee at the moment of the sale. Cyrus immediately makes a high offer, and Abby guesses he knows her team is there. He and Denton try to outbid Molson, and once the sale is done, my son activates an alarm. Everyone starts leaving the auction house and Abby gets suspicious and sends her team in. In London, the alarm goes off and Magnus messes with an electronic lock to sneak inside the storage, where he steals a costly painting. He puts it inside a tube and throws it into the water, where Luke picks it up. Cyrus offers N8 to come to his yacht to finish the transaction and they leave through the back door, where pilot Camila waits for them on a boat. They're already gone by the time Abby arrives, and she realizes they've stolen the artist instead, as an NFT can't be physically stolen. She rushes outside in an attempt to follow them on another boat, but my son hacks into many boats to block her way. Abby refuses to give up and boards a different boat. Camila starts driving quickly and taking steep corners to slow her down. When they reach the sea, my son activates a barrier. Camila manages to drive through it just in time, leaving Abby behind. When the team reaches the yacht, they pay N8, the 20 million for the NFT, and begin to party. Afterward, Abby and her team looked at the security montage and noticed that Denton had been faking his limp, so she sent her men to look for him. The following day, the news reported N8's kidnapping. N8 freaked out when he realized these guys were criminals, but Cyrus quickly explained what was happening. The Mona Lisa only became valuable after being stolen, so they copied that idea. Magnus and Luke sold the painting for 20 million for Cyrus to buy the NFT from N8. Now that it had disappeared, the NFT was worth 89 million. Cyrus would be sharing the money with N8, who happily played along. Meanwhile, Interpol arrested Denton, and Abby had a picture proving he knew Cyrus. While she tried to interrogate him, she received a box sent by Cyrus with his paddle from the auction and pictures from the week they spent together. Frustrated, Abby decided to go to London and bring Denton. Abby met Huxley at the British headquarters, who wanted to offer Cyrus a deal. At first, Abby refused because she had been chasing Cyrus for a year. Still, Huxley had a mission that took priority. Jorgensen was a very dangerous criminal who had killed hundreds of people for money. Still, they had never gotten enough evidence to arrest him. Huxley finally caught a mole and learned that Jorgensen was teaming up with the hacker group Leviathan to plan a strike on water, which would flood a city and kill millions. Leviathan wants their payment in gold, and Jorgensen will move it from London to Zurich in 17 days. Since it's not illegal to move your gold, Huxley wants Cyrus to steal it and prevent the transaction. Abby hates it yet has no choice but to agree. In the evening, Abby visits Cyrus, who refuses the job when he hears the name Jorgensen because of how dangerous he is. Abby points out that she has Denton, and he'll die in jail, unless Cyrus accepts the job, which will grant complete immunity for the whole team, meaning they'll be able to see their families again. Cyrus only agrees if Abby works with them, too. Meanwhile, henchman Cormac has captured the mole in Ireland and has been hurting him for a while. Once the guy has suffered enough, Cormac video calls Jorgensen so he can watch how a dog eats the traitor. The next day, Abby releases Denton and meets with the team to share her intel. They will pack the gold bars into a crate and surround it with guards at both airports. After much thinking, Cyrus decides they should take the whole plane, meaning they should use a second aircraft to swap the radar signature. To do so, they will need a private jet, so they visit Molson to borrow his. Molson at first refuses but quickly becomes cooperative when Abby shows him his badge and points out he has been flying illegally. 
Then Malson explains how everything in the jet is remote controlled and shows off some features, like a hidden pole and a screen underneath. Afterward, Abby uses an Interpol hanger to hide the jet, which they are covering up to look like an old, unsuspicious plane. Magnus is modifying his vault breaking laser to work on a plane despite the turbulence, and Denton is already testing new wigs and beards. Camilla struggles with the simulation to practice moving the jet under the gold plane. Still, Cyrus has an idea. Luke will put all the cameras from the NFT on the jet so Camila can have complete visibility around the plane. My son has a program to hack into the GPS transmissions to trick air traffic control. Still, the issue is that doing both the jet and the plane simultaneously when moving so fast is impossible. At traffic control, someone will notice two planes with the same signal, but luckily, Abby knows someone. Sometime later, Abby and Cyrus meet with Harry, who works at air traffic control and is also an Interpol informant. Abby can't convince him to help with the argument for helping people, so Cyrus offers him a million dollars, and Harry instantly agrees. Later, the duo meets with Huxley, who tells them they found the mole dead, and because of that, the bank will move the gold in 10 days instead of 17. Cyrus doesn't think there's enough time and wants out, triggering an argument with Huxley. Abby shuts them both up by reminding them that this is about saving lives, so Cyrus agrees to stay for her. At the hangar, the team sees on the news that cyber terrorists have attacked Madrid's water grid, and the city is now severely flooded. Thirteen people have died so far, but they expect the numbers to get worse soon. Cyrus thinks this has gotten too dangerous and tries to quit again. Still, the team refuses to give up now and agrees they must stop Jorgensen although Luke sounds hesitant. In his mansion, Jorgensen thanks Leviathan for their little demonstration. After putting in a lot of work, my son finishes the device that will hack the plane's GPS, but unfortunately, it resembles a bomb. They have no choice but to select a few individuals to board the plane with the components and assemble the device. Over the next 10 days, the team works diligently to complete all the details, camouflage the plane, practice device assembly, and accomplish all their tasks in perfect synchronization. On the day of the operation, Cyrus and Abby board the plane, posing as a couple in first class, while the rest of the team is dispersed in various sections. Cormac and four other henchmen are also present to monitor the gold. The team employs concealed communicators to stay in touch, and Cyrus realizes that Luke still needs to check in. He calls Luke on the phone and discovers that Luke is too frightened of Jorgensen, so he withdraws from the mission. As the plane takes off, Camila also departs in the jet. My son hacks into the plane's information using her laptop and learns that Jorgensen's henchmen are on board, so they must proceed cautiously. One by one, the team members enter the bathroom to hide the pieces of the device, and then, Abby goes in to put it together. Abby manages to assemble the device quickly, but when she's about to hide it behind a light, she drops it, and it comes apart. Soon, Cyrus notices she is taking too long and enters the bathroom to help her. At that moment, henchman Donald gets suspicious. He knocks on the door, so Abby starts making noises to make it look like they are engaging in an intimate act to keep him away. Meanwhile, Camila's cameras are having trouble with the turbulence, and the signal goes out. Another camera even breaks, but Camila makes a last-minute move before time runs out and pushes the jet under the plane. Because the device still needs to be ready, it generates the same signal twice on the traffic control computers. Harry has to distract a coworker by pretending to feel harassed by her. Thankfully, right then, Abby and Cyrus finish assembling the device, and the device hacks into the plane, making the second signal disappear. To celebrate, Cyrus kisses Abby after hiding the device. Afterward, Harry calls the plane pilots to inform them about a fake storm and asks them to change course, sending them to a private airfield in the Alps. The pilots believe it and start flying away. At the same time, Camila releases a drone that will maintain the signal on the original course to deceive the other traffic computers. The pilots also announce the change to the passengers, so the henchmen prepared to take action. Meanwhile, Denton plays the part of a sick man and distracts the stewardess allowing Magnus to take one of his oxygen tanks and sneak into the cargo area. Once my son cuts down the Wi-Fi and hacks into the gold's lock, Magnus puts on an oxygen mask. He opens the compartment with the gold, 
and the pressure variance from it hitting him makes the plane shake slightly. Accessing the gold with the laser will take a while, and the henchmen are getting into position. Donald uses his gun to kidnap a flight attendant and tries to get her to open the cockpit, which Abby sees. At that moment, the laser makes the plane shake again, and Cyrus uses the chance to tackle Donald, who responds by opening fire. Cyrus begins throwing bags at him as a defense and jumps on him to disarm him while a second henchman arrives. Abby jumps on this guy, and they start fighting when Cyrus fights Donald hand to hand. The more Magnus uses the laser, the more the plane shakes, and both fights start stumbling all over the place. Donald tries to choke Cyrus with a phone cable. At the same time, Abby pushes a cabinet, causing both henchmen to dodge out of the way, and the cabinet falls downstairs with Cyrus and the stewardess. At that moment, Magnus finally opens the safe and accesses the gold. Abby knocks down the other henchmen while Donald retrieves his gun, but before he can shoot, Cyrus knocks him out by smashing him against some glass. Then Cyrus and Abby try to reach Magnus, only to find Cormac blocking their way with a gun. Suddenly, the plane landed on the new destination. Since the ground was frozen, it started sliding around, not stopping until the snow caught it. Soon, Camilla also lands with the jet, and she has to try to stop it from sliding right before it hits the plane. Cormac and his two men capture Abby, Cyrus, Magnus, and Camilla. After calling Jorgensen to confirm the gold is refined, Cormac promises to deliver it himself. Initially, Cyrus tries to make him use the train as planned, but Cormac takes the jet, taking the team with him, except for Magnus. Moments later, Camilla is piloting the jet under Cormac's orders. Still, she presses a button to send her teammates a signal. Abby and Cyrus put on their seatbelts. Camilla starts piloting the jet like a maniac, making it shake while pretending it's gold throwing them off balance. All the shaking slowly removes the metal covers, which will help find the jet again. Back in the Alps, Magnus hits his captor and steals the gun, only to put it down and attempt to escape. When the henchman grabs the weapon and tries to shoot, the gun backfires and injures his hand, just as Magnus had modified it to do. At the train station, Huxley notices the gold isn't coming, and his partner informs him the plan failed. Now, the gold is flying to Jorgensen's Dilla. Huxley calls NATO and informs them about a terrorist threat that requires immediate action, showing no concern for Abby's safety. Military jets are dispatched. At the same time, Jorgensen meets with the Lediathan leaders, pretending that the gold delay was part of his plan to divert authorities' attention. Soon, NATO jets surround the team's plane, prompting Harry to inform the authorities about civilians on board. However, Huxley falsely denies it, giving the order to shoot down the plane anyway. In a desperate move, Cyrus activates the pole to disarm the henchmen, and he and Abby engage in a fierce battle with them throughout the plane. Amidst the struggle, Abby manages to seize the remote control. She displays the message civilian hostages on board on the large screen under the jet. Camilla makes a daring maneuver, flipping the jet upside down to reveal the message to the soldiers who promptly abort the rocket launch. Once the other jets depart, a henchman threatens Camilla to rectify the situation. She returns the jet to its original position before confronting the thug, who forcefully pushes her back into her seat and breaks her wrist, demanding she land the plane. Camilla pretends to be the pilot, only to suddenly pull a lever, causing the jet to descend rapidly. While Cyrus keeps Cormac at bay, Abby regains control of the aircraft. She opens the door, sending Cormac flying out of the plane before closing it again. Subsequently, the duo rushes to the cockpit and takes control because Camilla cannot pilot with a broken wrist. They stop the plane from falling. However, another metal piece came loose and damaged the hydraulic pump. While still in pain, Camilla did her best to steer the plane using the engines. The jet landed in Jorgensen's garden but it slid down the road for a few minutes and was destroyed until it turned on its side. The gold immediately fell off the plane, and Jorgensen's guard surrounded Cyrus, Camilla, and Abby. Cyrus noticed a working camera and mentioned the NTF they had seen during the auction, signaling my son to start hacking. Jorgensen came to interrogate them with a gun. Still, at that moment, the Lediathan leader received a message about Interpol and cancelled the deal. Furious, Jorgensen shot her leg and demanded that she restore the deal, but since she turned him down, 
he shot again to kill her. Then Jorgensen asked who the Interpol agent was, so Cyrus pretended it was him. Before Jorgensen could shoot him, the Italian police arrived and surrounded them. Jorgensen pretended he had taken out his gun in self-defense because some crazy guys had landed in his garden. So Cyrus gave my son the signal, and now the video of Jorgensen killing the woman appeared on the plane screen. While Jorgensen is arrested, Huxley and another agent arrived by chopper. Abby learns from the agent that Huxley almost got them shot, so she punches him and announces her resignation. Cyrus and Camilla leave on a boat, and Abby soon joins them. A few weeks later, Cyrus surprises Abby by purchasing her childhood home. He also makes a big reveal. Luke never quit. He was on a side mission to steal the gold. Magnus had made a bunch of fake gold bars and shipped them on the same plane, so during the fight, he exchanged the gold for the fake cargo and threw the natural bars out of the plane. Luke was in the Alps using a remote control to make the gold land safely, and Huxley was furious that he was stuck with useless metal. Now Cyrus and Abby reunite with the team next to a lake, and using the remote control, they retrieve gold from the water. Abby agrees to join the team, and Cyrus kisses her.